Okay, well, welcome to, to Breathe Life Ministries. This is our expert interview, and we are here with Grace Gross, who is the author of these awesome science fiction books. And before we get into the book, I just want to introduce you to Grace. And Grace, where exactly are you from? Well, I grew up in Texas and I lived there for a good portion of my life. Then I worked, I went to work with a native ministry and lived in New Mexico for a period of time. Oh, cool. Then I met my husband and he was in Canada and oh. we have lived in Canada since that time. So it's just been 20 years or oh, 20, 21 years that I've been in Canada. Oh my goodness. I am really excited to hear a little bit about the native ministries that you were involved with. Share, how did you get led to that? Sure, absolutely. It was, uh, and we still do work with indigenous people. So Wonderful. I grew up in a family that loved missionary people. My mother was very, um, her heart was really for overseas. In fact, she wanted to be a nurse and go overseas herself. But then, she met my father and instead of having, getting married and having a family and then becoming a teacher, which was just really up her alley. It was her calling, but we had missionaries through our home all the time, like from all over the place, Papua New Guinea, you know, Africa. We hosted a missionary family for a number of years. We hosted their son and then the family. So I had this experience growing up and I, um, as people do, and I'm sure the Lord just laughs. When we say that we've got our life planned out, I had my life mm -hmm. planned out. I had a perfect plan. I was going to get a business degree. I was going to work in business for a couple of years. I was going to get married and have my 2.4 children. And I'm sure the Lord was just kind of, okay, mm -hmm. honey, whatever you say. <laughs> so, so I did go into business for a while. I went to, to Colorado Christian College. I got a business finance degree with a minor in Bible and was in business for seven, um, make it nine years, okay. nine years. But then during that period of time, I just through a series of events, the Lord directed me to this ministry at a camp for native, uh, native kids oh, cool. in New Mexico. I was living in Texas at the time and okay. it just, it was like the Holy spirit came and said, you are going to do this. And it was just like, no, I'm not. I just moved. I have this great new job. I'm a purchaser for a hotel renovation firm. I'm making friends. I met a couple of cute guys, you know, and he's like, no, no. So over the period of about, um, about a year, he, my heart was just like, I couldn't, he planted something and I couldn't get rid of it. It would it just grew and grew. And he, surrounded me with these circumstances with the right people and the right time and there was just no escaping it and finally I found out that I didn't really want to escape it I wanted to go so right. I worked with the ministry called Broken Arrow Bible Ranch it was with a, a, a ministry called United Indian Missions okay. and they're still they're down in the down in the southwest and in parts of Canada uh -huh. So I, I was with them for four years and had an amazing and wonderful time. I love the kids. The, the ministry is still going. They've been hit by COVID, of course, but, oh, no. uh, but they're still going and I'm still in touch with everybody down there. And that was, a yes, I just, I loved it. And it's a beautiful place outside of Vanderwagen, New Mexico that I worked. Okay. And um, whereabouts is like, what major city would Vanderwagen be closest to? Gallup, I guess, would be the closest city okay. in New Mexico. So yes. kind of close to the Arizona border, about Got three it. hours from the four corners, uh, you know, Got Utah, it. Colorado. So it's, it. it was south of Gallup, New Mexico, about 30 minutes. Okay. Very cool. Oh, wow. That is what ages were you working with? Everything from, I believe, seven, eight to up to teen. That is so cool. And what tribe of indigenous people were you primarily, were you, was there one particular tribe? There, there were several in that area. It's uh, because the Four Corners area, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but there is uh, okay. some Pue Pueblo peoples as well as the Navajo Nation. The Navajo Nation 
is the largest uh, okay. native reserve in the United States. Okay. It covers over 200,000 square miles and it's wow. got a large, like the Navajo people are the largest indigenous people in the United States as far as numbers go. Okay. So the Navajo reservation was mainly in Arizona, part of New Mexico, and also the Zuni and the Hopi Pueblo peoples were ones that came quite a bit to the camp. They were in also um, Arizona and New Mexico. So those were the three. We had some Apache, we had some other tribal peoples, but mm -hmm. those were the main peoples that we were with. Oh, wow. That is, that is very, very cool. Awesome. And you did that for four years. Four years, then met my husband and we were involved with taking indigenous people on cultural exchanges across over the world. We've been to mm. Central Asia and to Russia and oh, to wow. different parts of Mexico, the, the non-tourist parts of Mexico <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and, and that kind of thing, taking uh, indigenous people that know Jesus to other indigenous people that do not know Jesus very well. Oh. Wow. Now, how has that, um, how has that impacted the kingdom of God, that, that, that exchange? What have you seen take place? Well, the whole purpose behind it was uh, we found that when another indigenous person talks to an indigenous person from a different country, be it Central Asia, Russia, we didn't, we didn't go to, uh, we went to indigenous people over there. Right. So if there's such an easier bridge for the gospel to cross because, you know, people that look like us sure. generally have been um, oppressive to the indigenous people, which mm -hmm. if you know the history, it's been very difficult. Yeah. So it's a lot easier for another person, indigenous person who knows Jesus to be able to talk to that person. That was our whole hope to get these people together so right. that they could hear about who Jesus really is, that he's not a right. white man, that it's not a white man's gospel, but that Jesus was actually a tribal person. Yes. And that yeah. he uh, can relate to them and loves them and wants to have a relationship with them. Oh, that is, that it, isn't it amazing how something as simple as just shifting one's perspective and going, wait a minute, how about people who can relate to each other talking to each other and how about empowering those people to talk to each other <laughs> you know that is just beautiful and powerful how cool thank you for sharing that absolutely oh, my pleasure <laughs> and you and your husband are still somewhat still involved in this uh yes we're in northwestern bc and there's uh, i won't speak about those a whole lot because it's you know it's a current situation but we're working with some indigenous people here getting to know them doing some discipleship training that kind of thing oh, and it's been it's been wonderful we've been in our current area for three years i love it i love it and whereabouts in canada are you located we are between well northwestern bc but this okay. is a rather vast area but yes. we're between um Terrace and Smithers in the Hazelton area. Okay, wonderful. So describe um, a little bit of your surroundings. Just what is it? Is it like lots of trees and mountains? So if I, if I walk out my door, I uh -huh. see this enormous, beautiful mountain called, it's either called Mount Rocher in English or Stekjoden in the native term terminology. And it's just pretty much right out my door. I see it in the distance. And then if I turn to my right outside my door, I look down into a valley and there's a river. There's a couple of rivers down there a little ways. And then there's that, there we're just we're round, we're ringed, I should say, ringed by mountains. And it's in trees. We have lots of trees, vegetation, berries, bears, ah, um, moose, kind of those bears? kinds of things. So, yes. <laughs> Do you have but black bears and brown bears? We have some brown bears, mainly black bears. Like okay. I would say like lots of black bears and moose and deer and oh, moose too. those I kinds of things. It. Yes. We actually, we're sort of subsistence hunters. So we hunt okay. for our, for our food and okay. we get moose and bear and fish. Yeah. <laughs> it is very yum. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about how you got into writing. Yeah. What, what led you to your first book? Well, 
would you like the long story or the short story? <laughs> you know, go ahead and share what's on your heart to share. What do you know? Just, just okay. free flow and just, you know, we'll do it. So when I was 12, my mother gave me a hello kitty diary <laughs> and I had never, I had never written much before then, but we were going on a family vacation for the first time up to Canada to okay. work at another camp uh, for indigenous people. My dad was going to build their first cabin. So 12 years old family trip. And I was to write in my hello kitty diary every day mm -hmm. of the trip so that I could remember what we did. And I did, I was a faithful little writer in my little diary, but I found that I liked it. So after that, more diaries came, more journals. We just kept doing that for a number of years. And I was like, you know, I like this writing thing. Yes. And I had several, uh, when I went to college and did term papers of which all college students get to partake, mm -hmm. I had good feedback from a number of professors that were just like, this is, you know, you actually have something of a, a talent for writing. I'm like, oh, well, that's nice to know. And I just kind of passed it off. And because I had my plan, I was going into business and doing all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, so I just remained a journaler for quite a number of years. Then I found a writing course that um, helped to develop some writing. I did that. It was self-study and with a, a team up with a mentor. So I did a number of short stories that never saw the light of day other than my husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I really enjoyed the, learning the craft and doing yes. some, you know, some reading on the writing and all this sort of thing. But I never, I really never considered becoming an author. Right. I, that was never like you hear people that have this dream of, I know I'm going to be an author from the time that they were a little bitty, mm -hmm. you know, seven, eight years old. But that was, that wasn't me. I just knew that I enjoyed writing, but I had so much other stuff that I was doing in life that mm -hmm. I'd never considered trying to publish something. Right. But then uh, fast forward to 2018, where we had just moved to our new area. Yes. And I was meeting the people in the area and a lady invited me to a writer's group. And I was, I'd never been a part of a writer's group. And I'm like, well, I already know I like writing. Why don't I go? Yes. So I went to this writer's group of which, you know, we averaged between like six to 12 people. It wasn't big, mm -hmm. but it, it got us writing. So we would have assigned words that we would just, you know, write a story on or whatever came, mm -hmm. you know, whatever we wanted to do, but they just did that for, for writing prompts. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so we did this. I did this for a number of months and I was having a grand time. It was <laughs> lovely. We met, we met every two weeks. So one of the nights after this had been going for quite a while, yeah, we had a word assigned. So people that were new uh -huh. to the group could assign a word it right. was their their privilege to assign our word so this lady came up with the word spacewalker and oh. i'm like oh huh so i wrote a little three-page story on it and and i just submitted it to the group you know we read our stuff the next time we got together yeah. but i was like i i think there might be more to this yes and yes so about the same time during my prayer time, you know, with the Lord spending, because usually I try to uh, spend time with him every day and also, you know, read through the Bible every year. That's kind of what we do right. together. And I was praying and then I just heard, right. And it was like, I saw it in front of me in capital letters with an oh. exclamation point. And I'm like, right. Okay. So I was kind of like, do you want me to follow up with this story? And it was like, yes. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I don't even, maybe you can relate to this, but it was just like, he downloaded the ideas for the three books that I knew yeah. I was to write in my series. It was like, boom. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. every single little tiny detail, but I knew yeah. the overviews, kind of the outlines and where they were going to go. Yes. And I was like, yeah. okay. So I jotted down all this stuff and then mm -hmm. I started to write and mm -hmm. it was a, the first book, which was Quantum Spacewalker, Daryl's Journey, <laughs> was was fast. Like I basically yeah. disappeared. My poor husband didn't see me for like four months because every <laughs> spare minute I was up in my book nook and I was writing. <laughs> and he's just like, where did my wife go? <laughs> kind Grace. Of thing. I know, Grace. Um, but I finished that book in four months and then um, wow, I had to go through fast. the 
it, it was, well, my second book certainly didn't go quite that quickly, but <laughs> the, uh, the first book did. And then I began the, pro the process of figuring out what I was going to do with it now that it was in, um, you know, manuscript form. Right. Oh my gosh. So you are you you must be well I don't want to assume are you a science fiction fan oh yes what are absolutely some of your favorite science fiction books oh gosh I I love Ray Bradbury I love him okay. I mean he doesn't write just science fiction but I, oh. I really enjoy him Frank mm -hmm. uh, Frank Herbert you know Frank on well, well you know Thomas um the Thomas Covenant series I don't know if you're familiar with Stephen Donaldson no. uh -uh. um so those are some of my, well, those are just off the top of my head. Of course, I love the C.S. Lewis um, yeah. space. They're the three yes. books there. But just because who doesn't love those if they know yes. C.S. Lewis? <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so those are some of the ones just off the top of my head. But there's many others. I have a shelf, you know, oh. full of. So, is that, so I would imagine, you know, when I first decided to write a book, um, I went with what some I'd heard another author um, say, and that is write what you know, or write what you're passionate about. So that's why I, I didn't want to assume, but I kind of assumed that this must be a passion um, as far as your genre of book, you know, just for reading goes. And, um, but what a unique concept you came up with to incorporate eschatology or end times teaching with science fiction. Describe how that kind of married together. What? Well, the because <laughs> that is totally, that is one of the most intriguing um, concepts I have seen in the in the you know what um, author genre, the nonfiction genre of book. Oh, well, let's see. Um, I, I love the word of God and mm -hmm. that that's in the form of, of the Bible, as well as the person of the word of God, which is who is Jesus. Yes. So if you uh, have those two together, because I believe, you know, he is the truth. And if you look into the science, I mean, if you look into in quantum physics or quantum mechanics in any, uh, like, and I'm certainly by no means an expert, but I find the concepts fascinating mm -hmm. because in Hebrews, it talks about, he is the word that upholds all things. Right. So he is, he is at the very underlying base of what makes the universe work. Yes. And if that is, I mean, and I believe scripture is true. So if that is indeed mm -hmm. true, then that mm -hmm. means that he must be throughout every single layer that yes science can um can investigate right and you know science is doing its best to investigate but it has its limits you know we can only go so big and so small right and but what we find is very consistent with what is found in scripture so i figured just the first the first little three-story um thing i put together with the, the spacewalker word mm -hmm brought to the fact was like, you know, you always ask what if questions, if you're an author, you know, what if this, what if that? <laughs> so, you know, so I'm thinking Jesus is the word that upholds all things. What if he actually had a human get his, because it talks about in revelation 19, where he's uh -huh. going to have a sword coming out of his mouth that is right. going to deal with his enemies. And I'm like, what if there was actually a physical sword tucked away somewhere that a person needed to get to take to Jesus that he's going to allow him, allow a person, a human to uh -huh. handle the sword and give it to him so that he can wrap things up for the end of the age. And oh. that just kind of brought everything to <laughs> a, a focal point. Right. And then right. it just, it kind of, I, I didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out until the book was done. So, right. right. Oh my And then God. I, <laughs> that is so creative. I love that. I love untouched territory, and that's what I'm seeing with your book. It's so just, that's encouraging. Yes, it's just it's completely untouched territory, and um, that and, and so I mean that that must really tap the limits and stretch you in your creativity. Indeed, so, it does. <laughs> so. 
How did you go about researching for your book? I, well, I, I've read the Bible probably 27 times. So I had to this point, so I had some, some, and I've done various different studies. So I had that. Right. But then I, of course, being very fascinated by quantum mechanics have gotten, yeah. have done quite a bit of reading. I found an excellent resource by a man named Phil Mason called okay. Quantum Glory that okay. deals with it from a uh, biblical standpoint, the quantum world. Ooh. And I ate okay. that up and it's, it's not a book that you can um, digest quickly. It's more that, you know, you have to take off a little chunk and chew on it a bit and then take yeah. off another chunk. And I also have done some self-study through, um, what, what is it, great courses like the theory of everything, string theory, books on quantum mechanics, these kinds of things. So okay. uh, quite a bit of reading and okay. some researching that way. And that's, that's what's fueled a lot of my imagination, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so... How do you do? How do you map out your books? Do you do you just sort of begin and just keep writing, or do you do you put that put it on a storyboard? What I know, everybody's got a different process, and I I was listening to a podcast. There's some very good podcasts on on writing and and the Christian podcast. One is the uh -huh. novel marketing podcast, and another oh. is the Christian publishing, uh, Christian. Writers Institute, sorry, or something like that. I need to go look that one up. Okay. But a couple of good podcasts. And in one of those, I heard an interview that talked about you are either an outline writer or a discovery writer. So the outline writers are those that, you know, they have a general outline or they do the storyboards where they have their, uh, their story is mapped out pretty, pretty concisely and they just have to fill in the, right. the bits. Yeah. And then there's the discovery writers that discover the story as they write. And I would definitely put myself in that category because I know oh. the high points. I know I have a very, a very loose outline. And some people have called it like, you know, there's a story beam that is the, the main, oh. like the storyline of your book, but then you've got the other parts that come off of it that you don't know the branches until you right. get to them. Right. So that's, right. I would, I would call myself a discovery writer. Some people call them pantsers, but that's, I don't think that's a totally, you're not totally flying by the seat of your pants because there's a general outline, mm -hmm. but not a, not a more specific outline. Right. Right. <laughs> I totally, I'm kind of an outline writer. Um, I'll, with a, I mean, I think, you know, there's a little bit of discovery that happens as you're writing. It, it just, it's just going to go that way. But for the most part, but the kind of thing I'm doing in the devotional world, it's, you know, it, you kind of, you kind of need an outline. Yeah. From. Whereas in a, in a, I've never tried writing nonfiction. So um, that, or writing fiction, I mean, um, writing, you know, um, a story. Mm -hmm. I used to write plays. I, I oh, did wow. You did plays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was a theater major and, oh, and so awesome. I understood that was my first writing. I understood scripts. I understood okay. dialogue. So I found it easiest to write in the form of a script. Um, but, but then, you know, I laid, you know, that, that was during the time that I, I don't know if you recall, but back in the nineties, it was the illustrated sermons were really hot. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And, and, and a couple of the churches I went to were really into that. And so they needed people to write scripts for that. And I was, okay. because I'd been a theater major and I understood how to direct things, you know, it was like, well, Donna, this is your project. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You just got built and volunteered for this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> fun. Yeah, it was fun. I did enjoy it. Um, but that, you know, that was my mind just, I like, like I said, you know, you write what you know. So, yeah. you know, you, I knew scripts. So that was where I started. But um, that it, the, the, what you're doing with the, with the, um, my brother growing up was a huge science fiction fan. So he read. Ah. Good Lots man. of science fiction, yes. <laughs> so I sort of gleaned off of what, you know, he'd talk about the stories he was reading and stuff. 
Um, so it is it is a really fun field. But I know then being in eschatol, I love eschatology. So when you were combining the two together, I was going, this is cool. This is really cool. Um, so talk a little bit about what we learn in the first book. Okay, I'll just I'll I'll just give you a little picture of it here. This oh, is okay. Quantum Spacewalker, Jarl's Journey. Uh-huh. And it's uh so he's a 25-year-old fellow that well he meets Jesus at a very at a very young age mm -hmm. as a boy. Mm -hmm. And then he is later on given some tasks to do for to help the the people that are still on earth that belong to Jesus during the end times period, which is as we know going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. So showing how the Lord cares for his people, how the Lord provides for his people is a theme for the first book. Ooh, yeah. Um, so he utilizes, I don't want to give it all the way, but he utilizes sure. the the Omer of manna and Aaron's rod that budded from the Old Testament. Which oh. if you're familiar with the Old Testament, you will know that at a certain point they disappeared. So right. the story is about how they're reintegrated into our world and then uh Jarl is tasked with helping the lord's people and providing for them and then also at the very end you know of course there's there's adventure there's romance there's humor there's these sorts of things throughout the book but at the end uh, at the, the end of the book then he's given his final task which is to give to go find the revelation 19 sword for jesus oh. and that's that's sort of the big the, the big last thing so it okay. is his learning how to to move through the quantum realm and the underlying uh, points of that, as well as how that is used then for the end of the age time period. Right. So what is the timeline of the um, end times events in your book? How does how do you work through that? Do you start at the very beginning and then move through or yeah so the book like you know what what uh tim lahay and jerry jenkins covered in like 13 books is, is right. packed into one book so there's there's large i um there's definitely moving through time periods mm -hmm. relatively quickly but you're not dealing so much with the events that are occurring as with the the lord's people uh, how okay. the, how they're being taken care of how they're being dealt with so right. you see the events that are occurring in the world but then right. you see that there's a separation between those events and God's people. Okay. So the events are still occurring and there there's, there's touch points along the way. It starts mm -hmm. with it's the events. I should say, start with the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Oh, okay. and then that's sort of the starting point. Right. And then they go through until Jesus returns. Very cool. Very cool. Right. Then when we step into the second book, now does the first book end on a cliffhanger? It does not. The first book. So these are, it's not a trilogy in the sense that it's continuing okay. story. It's okay. a series and that this is definitely Jarl's story. And then it moves to his sister Anira's story. Oh. And then, so this is, it's not a cliffhanger per se, but it definitely moves. The, the characters are similar between the books. Got it. Got, okay. That's cool. That's very, so it's like different perspectives. Yes. Different perspectives. That's perfect. That's a good description. I love it. So what is Anira's story? Anira's story is she's his sister, his older sister. And she um, looks at things from a different angle. She is of, her heart is to heal. So we have, we have hope given, hope and provision in the first book. The second book is dealing with healing, not okay. just uh, both individual healing as well as universal healing. So... Mm -hmm. So she is uh, in the book, an older sister, emergency room technician, this kind of thing, as all of these events are coming down. And it goes through a period of time where she is um, also on the earth while end times events are happening. Okay. But that is a shorter period in this book, because then her goal is to be part of the universe healing team, which deals with healing and restoring the universe. Okay. And yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Again, a very creative perspective. And like I said, I, I can't think of anyone who's really touched on this in, in the fiction world and uh, the science fiction world. This is, and most people, it seems like most people when they write about 
eschatology and 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 bible prophecy and end time events they want to look at it more like a tom clancy novel you know mm -hmm. the political thrillers you know yep. whereas you're it really is wonderful science fiction material and to 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 examine it and explore all the dynamics from that perspective is i mean it, it does it does unleash you a bit right it's true yep. yeah. yeah yeah and that's uh well because i knew i wasn't going to be writing a political kind of thriller that's just sort of not my bent mm -hmm. so this is definitely going to be more of a um well an individual journey thriller almost like a you hear about the hero's journey kind of thing so it's uh -huh. that kind of a a feel to it as far as the way it's uh put together okay awesome how did you come up with your characters <laughs> um, uh, uh, hmm. i'm not even sure how to answer that so this is really how it happened like uh -huh. this i had i had my notebook in my little prayer room which uh -huh. is like my little book look. It's my night on my library and my place uh -huh. that I go to spend time with the Lord. And when he was saying, um, it was at the same time that I wrote the short story about Spacewalker, the word. Right. And I, I just came up with my character's name, Jarl. I had no idea until later what it meant. It actually really? means no, I had no idea until I found it in the book <laughs> later, quite by accident, but uh -huh. it means noble warrior. And that actually- I love it. It figures into the story very nicely. Yes, yes. So the, the name Jarl just came to me as I was writing that first segment. Uh-huh. And I was like, that's cool. And then as, as I sat and prayed about it after the Lord told me to write, it just came up. There's going to be a little bit of alliteration and that it's Jarl's journey. It's a nearest assignment and it's Quinn's quest. And that just, I, I was sitting there thinking like, what can I name? And, and I didn't know what any of the names meant. So I mm -hmm. like to study behind the scenes kind of, you know, name meetings, word meetings, these kinds of yeah, things. Absolutely. And um, then, and that figures into each of the books. So they just sort of walked into my mind and there they were. Oh, absolutely lovely. I love it. That's so awesome. How does your book group support you during the, during your writing process? Well, that's actually really good. Well, unfortunately COVID is kind of whacked our book group down to three people that meet on a regular basis mm -hmm. but still we get to get we get together and they are excellent encouragers for and it's a wide variety of people too i mean like uh -huh. we have an, an 80 year old matriarch who's you know so it's a mix of a mix of people and then we right. have a you know a, a grizzled 60 year old prospector with a big beard i mean <laughs> like I we have a, a variety of people <laughs> But they're they're good sounding boards and mm -hmm. they're good uh, good feedback givers. Mm -hmm. And one of the ladies who's actually who's also my neighbor is we've become each other's beta readers because she's also an author. She's written well, you know her, Nancy Huber. Yeah, I was she was is that Nancy? so yes, yes. so okay. yes, Nancy. So we, I've beta read for her and like done editing, like initial editing, and the, so we do those yeah. things for each other. Oh no. And, so yeah, it's it's such an encouragement and to have that accountability too every couple of weeks going and they're like, so have you written anything? <laughs> it's like, yes. And then you read that for them. Mm -hmm. And then we also do 10 minute writes where and some of that is incorporated into the books as well when okay. during our, our writing times. So they've been very encouraging. Excellent. It you know, that's one thing that I learned through writing my very first book was that having a community around you is extremely important and just like you said you know the accountability like and you know what's also i don't know if you discovered this as you were writing it with your community of other writers but if i was like getting stuck they really helped unstick me ah uh, i haven't Notice that there was a few things that I would mm -hmm. I would bounce off them ideas, but that mm -hmm. hasn't been as big. It's I think for me it's just been the accountability having that right. consistently there mm -hmm. has been very helpful. In fact, I, I that was where the first idea came. You know, it was just the Lord worked it all out with the yeah. okay, because Nancy had already written a couple of books and she uh -huh. was the only one in our writers group who had at that point okay so and she was just like you can do this you can absolutely do this so 
any excuses that I might have had were blown away. <laughs> <laughs> Took that mm-hmm. obstacle right out of the equation. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is phenomenal. So you're working on your third book. Yes, I am. Yes. And um, can you tell us a little bit about what this one's going to be? This one is still, well, because it is still in process, but I, I will say the character Quinn is, mm-hmm. uh, he's a Welsh gentleman. Okay. Who's, he, he figures into the other books as well. He's a character in the other books. Okay. But he will be dealing with the book of life. And I'll also be introducing Ooh. concepts of quantum time travel in this one. So Very that, cool. that is just kind of like where I'm at right now. I can't give you a whole lot more details. Sure, please. that's all right. But well, I take it back. There is a little bit more because okay. I found that the first book really focused kind of on, on the relationship with Jesus and who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. The second book fo- focuses on the Holy Spirit. And kind of deals more with the, the spirit of God. Oh, and yes. then the third book is going to be dealing with the father. So mm-hmm. he's going to be a, a larger player in the third book. So very cool. Those are the things that are in process. I love it. This is exciting. So where can people find your book? I am available pretty much everywhere. I'm on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Chapters Indigo, um, other places, just any any bookseller that's online, you can find my book. Okay. And if you if you'd like to order it like in line, um, if you'd like to order it into a store, you can order it into like a Barnes and Nobles and pick it up there, that kind of thing. Okay. So Fantastic. yeah. Very very cool. And um, one last question. Uh, let's say there's someone listening to this right now. And uh, maybe they're just a young person, you know, still in their teens, and they're thinking about maybe writing. What would you say to them? Absolutely right. Because the more you write, the more you love to write, and the better you get at writing. So if you feel that there is something inside you that needs to come out in written form, write. Just get a notebook and start writing. Very good. And the resources I found that you need to like further that the Lord brings along at the right time. So, but you need to write first. Yes. Get moving, get moving. Yes. And what about maybe the older person that's like, this has been something that they've dreamed about, but they're just like, Oh, I'm too old. (laughs) <laughs> my ship has sailed i saw a list just recently of some of the writers that have written amazing books that started in their 50s 60s 70s and 80s so just think like the young whippersnappers while well, they need to write and they might have a very excellent story to tell you have experience under your belt you have life experience mm-hmm. you have experience hopefully like with god you have experience with relationships these are things you've got a, a lot longer worth of life, like built up into you that needs to come out into a story form, be it nonfiction or fiction, because right. everybody has an important story to tell. Right. I love that. I love, they have a, a, what I was imagining as you were talking is this warehouse full yes. of, of uh, just a warehouse of precious, precious information yeah yeah well you think even the t been scriptural those that um are new coming into the gospel jesus talks about they're coming out they're bringing old and new out of their storehouse so it's like you've got this storehouse of information and wisdom that you need to share with people and one of the best ways to do that is writing oh excellent excellent word well grace this has just been absolutely delightful i have so enjoyed um, learning about your your ministry with the indigenous people learn, and learn, hearing your journey of, of becoming an author. And again, just the amazing creativity that you bring to your story and untapped, untapped material that needs to be discussed and, and, and is just inspiring to explore. So thank you. Thank you so much. So everyone, please do 
check out these wonderful books. And if you have a science fiction lover in your home, what age groups would you say this is appropriate for? Uh, it's a wide age group. I've had 12 to 14 year olds love it. And I've also had uh, 70, 70 plus years read it and enjoy it. So, and I've had some people in between. So I would say <laughs> younger is fine. I wouldn't go probably earlier than 10, just because there, there are a few themes in there, but I mean, not they're clean books. There, there's right. no, I mean, they're, they're completely clean books, but there is just some themes that might not do well, except for like a little older. Yeah. So yeah. Well, like ab, you, you, you 13 and older. Need, yeah. Probably need to be able to get into the abstract reasoning a little bit before, yes. before this will make sense to a child. Yeah. Yeah. But if they can, I mean, if they're already grappling abstract reasoning, by all means, right? Yes. By all <laughs> means, they'll, they'll probably have a good time with the book. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, Grace, thank you so much for sharing this with us. And for spending time with me on this expert interview. Thank and, you, Donna. Uh, yes, you are welcome. And everyone, we will see you next week. So stay tuned. God bless.